Hey guys, welcome to an exciting episode. Hey, not like all my episodes aren't exciting, but you're going to like this one because this is where we are going to start junk piling out one of these arch tops. So this is kind of like a before and after thing. No, not like the before and after thing on your dating website. No, this one is going to turn out good. So you've seen this particular guitar before. It's a no name. Um, it's got um, what feel like Bakelite uh, tuner knobs there. It's got a V-shaped neck here. That's kind of an indicator or something. Um, there's not much in terms of uh, anything under the fingerboard. This is a student model guitar and you've seen it in other episodes including fingerboard diving board um what else i'm just wasting time so the i cards don't pop up too close to each other yeah six string crack hack don't miss that one anyway i really could have named this guitar or this episode excuse me Coveter's Corner because this guitar is beautiful. Anytime I show uh, someone this guitar, they all freak out. It's like, wow, that is a beautiful, that is the most beautiful thing I ever saw. Maybe it's because it's blonde. No, not me. The guitar. So, let's put this thing on the stand. And we'll run up and down it and do the camera flyby. I hate that. I hate that when people do this, right? Now, we're going to put this on a stand. We're going to talk a little bit about it. And we're going to document the before thing on this guitar. So, let's go to the stand. Oh, before I forget, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. I am struggling on the choice of Matchbook of the episode. I'm kind of trying to narrow it down between 12 ways to get a raise and the spot liquor. Hmm. Hey, if you can help me out with either one of these, let me know. Wink, wink. This guitar has a couple of cracks in it, so it's kind of been laying around somewhere. And we just fixed this one in six string crack hack and then if you look here there's some evidence that it's been dropped at one point or another um the neck uh joint appears to be okay um but again it has a v shaped neck and those tuners are really old those are the original tuners and they have bakelite buttons on them but that's kind of what we're working with here it has this phony a sunburst finish that's kind of cool but that's the back of it okay we're on the front now it's got the typical econo tail piece that you would have found with a student instrument that attaches in four spots there so i showed you a guitar in a previous episode where it didn't have the triangle pattern were mounted but it had four holes and then it had been upgraded to a, a trapeze tail piece so um, the original button is there the strap button is there um, that is not the original bridge, and, um, I think if you look at, there's virtually no depth to the fingerboard, the fretboard, um, so the strings are inherently high. Um, this isn't one we're going to be able to get the action down, even if we were to tilt the neck back or something again. Uh, the neck joint looks okay. I'm going to go ahead and run a bolt through it to make sure it never goes anywhere. And that's going to be kind of a, a task because I'm going to run through here and I'm going to put a nylon insert washer or nut on the back where I run this through the neck. So I don't like using screws. I will actually bolt it and uh, I'll have a nut in there that will hold in its place forever but I'm gonna to have to use extensions and curly cues and slinkies and all kinds of other fancy ideas to make that work but um, it's got the holes for the original um, pick guard 
one there and then I'm sure there's one in here somewhere you can tell that it's been played there's some wear on it but the good part is on the arch top top there are no cracks the sound holes look good and it's, again it's got this interesting kind of mellow blonde colored sunburst paint job was probably done in somebody's garage with spray paint but anyway that continues on up here those tuners are trashed um, so we're going to uh, fix that up uh, we're going to go with a gold and black theme and I got a trashed out California license plate we'll put there we're going to put a trapeze on it we're going to do something with this bridge um, we're going to have to match book the neck that's a must for, for this theme. Uh, you're going to like the matchbooks I put on there. And, um, yeah, we'll put a pick up on it somewhere, depending on how this all works out. Again, the string height is high, but given the, the shallowness of this fingerboard, usually there's another, another piece of wood underneath here. We're going to be kind of limited to what kind of pickup we can put on this thing. I really don't want to cut a hole in it to put a pickup in it. So, um, but anyway, that's it. Um, get a look at it because this will be it. All right, guys, we are going to start on this project by working the headstock of the guitar. These tuners are awesome, but they're old. The buttons are starting to come off. So we're going to put some different um, tuners on here. I want you to notice that this this does have binding along the edge of the fretboard. Um, we're going to be careful with that, but if you remember, we did an episode called The Cure to Creativity. There's a link right up there, right about now, in which I showed you how to take this bag system. Canvas bags are cheap. We put a little notebook on there. Of course, Chick Flick Teal. Yes, I have a plethora of Chick Flick Teal. Uh, notebooks um, composition books is really what they are we don't want to downsell anything and underrepresent it but anyway all of our stuff that we're going to need to fix up this guitar is in this bag so think about getting that out of the way there's a lot of stress that goes out the window when you know you have your part so we are going to take our Ernie Ball string winder and put it to work. Uh, unfortunately, um, there's one of these tuner pegs that's broke off. See it there? So we're going to play the vice grips, vice grips, uh, twist and shout method to get that off. But anyway, I'm going to unwind this and I'm going to pull these tuners off of here. And then we are going to put a graphic on the front that matches the California junk pile theme there and we're going to take a look at fixing this up and and uh, and then finally we are going to think about matchbook in the neck okay guys before I forget I'm in a very forgetful mood today like I forgot to remind you I forgot to remind you isn't that cool who's dependent on who here but on the chick flick teal book we got that little um, memory card right there that we put our pictures and movies and stuff with this guitar these are cheap if you get them in bulk as long as the individual memories aren't that uh, big on the card but that's a good idea too anyway let's get back to this end here I'm excited about this because when the stuff starts coming apart the work that I do to make it different comes into play now we I've told you about this a million times um, when you take the bridge off of a guitar we want to remember that the scale length is the distance between the back of the knot right there and the crown of the bridge okay and um, you can tell where to put the bridge by finding the middle of the 12th fret measuring the back of the knot to the middle of the 12th fret and then that same distance is the distance you need to put between the 12th fret and where the bridge goes now anyway when i take this bridge off i'm going to push down and make sure it stays in place and then i'm going to take three pieces of this binding tape that's relatively low tack and make sure i mark where that 
bridge that because if I do that I don't have to go through and figure out how to re-intonate this thing by making sure that the bridge is in the right place because I know it is with these marks so take the time to do that and now you can see that there's these little pockets that that bridge will just fit right into I'm going to take the bridge course and put it in the canvas bag over here where all my parts are and then I don't have to worry about it and then I'll take these strings out of the way like so alright screws are out notice that I put all this stuff in a bag um, they're used somebody might want them for something when I'm done but I, I want you to look here um, that is a very different color uh, than than the rest of them. So somebody had done some work on this. And then you see the wear up here that, yeah, this is the original paint. I don't see anything underneath. But this guitar has been around. So we're going to pull these off. And um, again, put them in here. Somebody may like these if they're looking for something vintage like that. Yeah. And then we're going to use um, a vintage style black tuner that's going to go with the theme. And look at that. The hole is just almost the same size. But there's going to be some holes that need to be patched up or replaced or something. Now, once you get under here and you look, you can see that there were at some point what appeared to be different kinds of tuners here. You can see that there were holes. I don't know whether those were um, this type of tuner to begin with or what, but you start seeing a lot of things when you start pulling these things apart. Anyway, um, we're going to patch this up, and of course we're going to use chick flick teal screws. We have to. Come on, dudes. Okay, so the tuner pegs fit, but the escutcheons are keepers that are going to go there. I'm going to have to drill that a little bit out. Of course, I want those because I don't want the strings winding down into the um, headstock. It's not like it's not messed up already, but yeah, we're going to put a graphic over there. It has something to do with maybe Los Angeles County. I don't know. Do they show where I live? Yeah, but I, I really can't tell you because then I would... The amount of uh, fan traffic would... I'd have to file a safety traffic plan with the county engineer's department. Anyway, that'll be that graphic. If we look at this knot right here, it's it's had some time on it. So I've already cut another one. We're beveling it down, and then we'll do our final adjustment once that's done. And then, of course, we got the matchbooks that are going to go on the neck. I can't show you what they are right just yet but remember we did an episode called matchbooking a six string because this neck gets wider as it goes down i showed you how to cut a template out of a manila folder and then you just lay well you might have got a hint of what the matchbook was with that one uh oh but the matchbooks aren't wide enough for this so i showed you how to digitize that so the episode again was matchbooking a six string neck link to that episode right up there right about now so i've got quite a bit to do here and then you'll see the next part of the guitar i'm not going to show you this um as i go because you know then you'd only be partially completely disamazed once i get the whole thing done you are going to be fully disamazed oh hey you don't need to see this part you're not supposed to see this don't look up here anyway let's turn this over we talked a lot about this area right here breaking loose. When this breaks loose from here and moves this way, the neck pivots this way and the action gets higher. And, and watch that episode. So this is not cut loose yet. Yet is the key word here. But it, considering what I'm going to do with this, considering who it's probably going to go to and the way they're going to beat on this thing, it won't be too long. This will cut loose. So, am I going to do a neck reset? I'm going to do all that. No. Am I going to do a hippie neck reset where I cut this halfway off 
and then put a screw in here. No, I'm not going to do that. But I am going to bolt this to here. I'm going to do it in such a way that I don't have to worry about it anymore. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use a drill bit. We're going to use a plug cutter. Let me get this up here where I got a table to put this stuff on where you can see it. We're going to use a bolt. We're going to use a piece of wood. Since this is a California junk pile, we're going to use a piece of wood that come out of a significant place uh, in California, like maybe something to do with Alan Wilson. So what we are going to do here is we are going to drill a hole through right here and bolt this on in a way where we don't have to use a screw. Okay guys, let's catch up. We have bolted the neck right here and we didn't just run a screw in it, we bolted it through. Uh, there's a piece of blocking back here. We bolted that through using a steel bolt with a washer that's mounted into a pocket here and then on the inside it's got this fender washer and a nylon insert or stop nut so this isn't going anywhere and then we covered it up with a piece of relic wood from a historically significant house in California that we've heard about before anyway I did all this in an episode that you'll see called bolting a bad arch top neck and that is right up there right about now okay we have put a themed treatment on the back of the body of the guitar with a little help from our friends at earl lube paste and now i'm going along where the creases are and we're going to take some 400 grit paper and just go over this and knock it down age it a little bit, take these ridges off of here, like so, and make it where it doesn't snag up on the player and make it look as old and junky as it really is. All right, next piece of the project is we are gonna pull this tail piece off of here it just amazes me the little screws that hold these things on given the tension they get under but again we've learned in the back uh, in a past episode excuse me that most of the pressure is actually right here and not here but anyway we're going to beef this up and we're going to put um, this on here which you know, still gives us room up here where the bridge goes but we're going to figure out how to put a jack that's got a pin in it, in it to replace this. And of course we'll have to do some grounding and stuff. And I think you've seen this kind of stuff before in an episode called Tore Up Tail Piece right about there, right about now. Okay, in the process of mounting this and the holes that it needs to be mounted right here. We have drilled a hole just above this lower hole right there and pulled this wire through. Can you see this pushback covered wire and pulled it up through this F hole over here and stopped it with these hemostats. Yeah, that's what that's for. And this piece of gauging wood that I use for something else. But anyway, that wire will be wrapped around the screws that hold this on and will ground the strings through the said trapeze tailpiece so the coil doesn't buzz while this thing is screaming in some dive bar being trashed on by somebody who knows three chords in a slide. All right, now we're getting somewhere. We've taken off this old tailpiece and this strap button and replaced them with a jack for our cable that is a strap button, and that's run all the way through. Uh, we've put on this new trapeze here, 
and underneath there is all the wiring uh, that grounds the trapeze and we've ran all that up to here and stabilized it here and now we're about ready to hook up the volume potentiometer and this thing will be getting a coil and we'll hear it screaming at you. All right, guys, let's catch up. We have put a satin finished lacquer all over the body of the guitar. Um, we have highlighted the cracks and repairs with Chick Flick Teal. There's a piece of relic wood. We've retained the scuffs and scars that the thing has picked up along the way on the neck. And now Tammy has signed the back of the headstock and we're going to be working on getting rid of these holes uh, that are left from the old tuner configuration and putting new tuners in. All right, let's have a look at the top quick. Again, I use a satin finish lacquer to cover everything. And now we're going to take a look up here at the headstock. Now, I am using these black closed gears covered vintage style tuners and these escutcheons, that's what they're called, escutcheons, that sit in here. It's best if they're tapered because if you go to drive them in, you might split something. And if you're working on like a, a really expensive guitar, you're not going to want to make that mistake. So before I drive those in, and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on them before I do that. And um, I use Duco cement for that. That's good stuff. Um, because I don't want these working loose and all that kind of thing. But so I'm going to take this countersink tool. Now, if you get a countersink tool, one with more of these than less, these cutting fins, more than less is good because if you just have two, it flops around and chips out. But we just go along and just lightly do that. Gives us a little taper and it gets that paper out of the way. We just blow that out. We'll put a little Duco cement right here and drive these in. There we go. Once again, shout out to my friends at Earl Lube Paste for keeping this fancy Thomas Guide map on here for the headstock graphic. And to my friends at the Monrovia, whatever it is, va vaccinated for rabies. 642 tag number 642 630 1967 so you don't have to worry about getting rabies maybe it's time for a booster i don't know all right while we got this side turned up we're going to take our all here and be really careful because this is easy to split out this actually has binding on the side of the fingerboard but i've marked this off i'm going to tap that just a little bit where our fret markers are going to go so when we drill and then we're going to put two down here on the 12th fret so we know where we're at. There we go. Oh, little trick here when these holes don't line or up or even if they do just put a little spot of glue there because these holes are a little bit big we don't want these tuners getting sloppy after a while so you just take one of your bacon flavored toothpicks and you just stick it in there like that and you just snap it off like so and then you're just going to take your file here like this and pop that off there and then sand it down so the so the tuner will drop right in there and the screw has some fresh wood to grab onto for the next 60 years there we go a little trick very expensive trick
All right, let's catch up. We got a ton of stuff going on here now. First off, we're going to put our um, pin and jack. This will take the place of a strap button and give us our jack. And um, of course, we don't want to forget to use shrink wrap um, when this thing goes back in the body because it's going to be in there for 10,000 years till you see it again on Antiques Roadshow. We've got a bridge here. That we've got to take a lot out of. We put some strings on this thing. It's finally making a little noise. There we go. But we've got to cut this bridge down and we're also going to dye the bridge. Not like you dye your hair when it gets gray with this stuff. It, this will work real good. I don't know. I don't have that issue. But we're going to use India ink to make this bridge match the rest of the motif um what else we got going on? oh yeah we're taking this perfectly awful california license plate from 1958 and making a pit guard out of it and um just some general wiring and stuff like that um but we're getting close i'll see you in a bit
All right, guys, the California junk pile is done, D-U-N done, and it turned out slick. I mean, it's slick, Oklahoma slick. It's that slick, slick. Yeah, so now we're going to put this on a stand, and before I started working on this thing, I did uh, shots of the back and the front on a stand. So we're going to look at that first, and then I'm going to do a back and front of this now kind of like a before and a after yeah. then we are going to throw this in a case and boogie over to Ventura where my friends at Ventura County Customs Ventura County Customs Customs with a K at the front and a Z at the end that is really custom anyway my friends at Ventura County Customs are going to get together with their old cars and have a barbecue today and my friends Frank Goldwasser you know him and Richard Vanderwick on the drums are going to give this thing a strum for you and that's how we'll close out this episode I like building these things I like showing you how we piecemeal them together and yard sale them all up and I hope you give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't now Let's take a look at the before and after. This is good stuff, dude. Guaranteed. Works better than onions and all that other chick flick trick that I taught you. This is good stuff. Anyway, we're going to get done with this if I ever quit talking. And then we will uh, go to Ventura and you'll be able to hear this thing. It sounds better than it looks. Let's go. Thank you. 